Okay, so for the second portion of my uh, intro to putty programming video, I'm going to show you how to set up just a basic uh, C program in putty. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up our configuration window, uh, type in our host name again, bestmumble.cs.wisc.edu. Now remember, if you're not a member of UW Madison nor you're involved in enrolled in uh, computer science classes, you won't be able to access this server. Um, but if you can access the server, you will be able to create any pro uh, either of the two programs I show you how to make on here. So we'll just open that again, run with the right ports, make sure the connection's SSH, we'll open it. We'll get our login information, type in our login names, our password. Get our open screen, take a look at what files we have again. We have all these, we made those before, but not very important right now. So right now we're just going to create a basic program. What we want to do uh, is create a program like any intro program that just prints out hello world. So we're going to go to our visual modulator again, just VI, and then we're going to write the name of our program. It's just going to be hello world. This time we're going to do dot .c uh, to let us know that it's going to be a C program file. So just dot .c is fine. Let's repress I again. And then this time uh, we're going to start out with the lines. We do hashtag include. Now this is a pre-compiler process. It's a higher level, I guess understanding of C, what it'll do is it before the compiler actually compiles your program, this pre-compiler will look through this and it'll find anything with a hashtag in front of it, it'll read it, and then it'll also uh, basically comment that out so the compiler, when it compiles, will not read that, will not read that section of code. Well, also what we want to do is we're going to want to insert uh, we're going to want to import basically. We're going to want to import some uh, kind of printer because we're going to want to print out the phrase. So we're going to do standard IO dot H, and the dot H is kind of like a directory address call to uh, bring out and import uh, those standard IOs. So we'll go down, we'll create a main method like every program does. Put our brackets, go down a little ways. Now we're going to just write a print statement, just print f, because that's the printer we're going to be calling. That's when we imported with this standard io.h. We'll get our little quotations, because it's just going to be a string that's basically output. And we'll do hello world. Close it off. Simple as that. Close the bracket. Should be good. We'll do what we did before, which you press escape. Shift ZZ that saves our program now. Now, if we go back to our list, just ls, we have our program right here. Now, if we try to run that, or maybe we just try to type it in, see what happens, it'll give us this weird permission denied thing. You'll be like, ah, why am I denied? I made this program. First of all, what you have to do is you have to compress it. In order to run these programs, you have to compress them first. If you're running a C program, you're going to do GCC and then the program name. If you're doing a C, you'll do G and the program name. Hit enter. If uh, nothing else occurs, if it just gives you another command prompt line, that means there are no compile time, no compile time errors. And then your code seems like it's good to go. It's not necessarily will run, run, run properly, but for now it made through most of those initial checks. You can do the ls. See what codes we have. We have our hello dot world. I mean hello world dot c. Now we have this a dot out. Now what that does is that allows you to call this program and I guess actually run it. So we do a dot out. That was wrong. Press a comma dot. A dot out. Do it right. It says hello world. Isn't that nice? Now a dot out is kind of weird. It's just like a basic um, output print format. What you can do is if you want to change that to something maybe a little more, so I guess something you can remember, you can do this command called basically move where you do MV and you do uh, 
the previous uh, command or the current uh, command name, and you want to you write the next command name that you want to change it to. So just be hello world. It'll be easy enough to remember, and then we know that hello world statement basically uh, calls the hello world program. Press enter. We do ls. We now have this green hello world star function, and that allows us to call that program. So just do hello world, and that'll call the hello world. Simple as that. All right, now that program is pretty basic. We might, what if, if you want to do like a program that takes an input? This will also be a basic one, but it takes an input and then it'll add two numbers together. So here's what you want to do: open your visual modulator again, give it a name. We'll do addition because it's just gonna take two numbers from a user's input and then add them together. So do .c because it's a C program. Hit enter. We'll do our insert. So we can start typing our hashtag include for the precompiler, our standard I.O. so that we can um, access the printer and the scan function to read the user input. This time we'll do int main because it's going to be uh, returning an integer. Now we're going to want to create some variables. So if we're going to um, get two numbers from the user and then print out a new one, we're probably going to want three variables. And they're both going to be integers since they're just numbers. You could do double or float depending on what type of numbers you want. If you want decimal numbers, we'll just keep it simple and we'll declare three variables. We'll do A, B, and then C. Finish that off. We'll do a print line. Now this will prompt the user to enter a value, so we'll just do enter first value. Give it some space, and then we'll close that off. And now we're going to want to enter a scanner so that um, our user input is actually read and it actually does something. So we'll do scan F, kind of similar to print. Now you're going to want to do percent %d, lowercase d, quotes, comma, and then your variable that you want that to be assigned to. Now if you use Java, that'll seem a little bit weird. Percent %d might not make sense. Normally you just uh, do variable equals the scanner input. But right now, uh, the reason you put this percent %d in is that it creates a placeholder for your variable, which is stated afterwards or after the string and that variable takes that place. What else we also need to do, which I forgot, is you need to add an and sign before your variable. And that allows the scanner to call the address of that variable so it can actually grab the variable and put it in uh, that placeholder and then assign the user's input to that variable. So we'll go on again and do another prompt to prompt the user to enter a second value. We'll close her off again. And then we'll do another scanner so that it reads and assigns the second input to the B spot. So remember the percent D in quotes in the AND to represent the variable that it's going to take the place of, or the variable that's going to be assigned to. I spelled this scanner wrong, I don't want to do that way. Then we're going to do another printf statement to print out our final, say, string of answer and questions. So we'll do percent %d plus another percent %d. So these are just two placeholders. And that'll equal the percent %d. And we'll do a little end of the line comment, so that'll give us some space there. Turn that off. We do a comma. And then you'll do your first variable second variable and your third variable and we'll close that off and you might be wondering how the computer is going to know what variables to put where and it's basically the first variable that, uh, listed in the print statement line is going to go in the first placeholder that was created and the second in the second placeholder and the third in the third placeholder okay so what I forgot to do before was I forgot to create an actual mathematical value for our expression and that'll just be 
um, C equals A plus B. Simple as that, nothing really to it. And then just assign C to the values of A plus B. So we go down here, with our print statement as we did before. Now we'll enter a return zero to let the method method know that it is complete and then we will close off the brackets we'll do our escape shift zz it'll save our program we'll look at it in we'll do a list here right now we see a our addition.c which is what we want and again we have to compile it so we'll do gcc addition which is the program .c. and once again there are no errors so for now our program appears to be working the list again we have this a dot out and now a reason before is why a reason before why I changed the name of that a dot out is because if you get multiple programs on here and they all kind of function from this a dot out the compiler gets confused and so does the computer and weird things can happen so it's always good to just right after you create that to just change your a dot out to a quick and easier um, command prompt do addition again. So I just do addition. It'll ask me for my first value. Say five. Ask me for my second value. Say six. Six plus five plus six is eleven. And we're good to go. Okay. So once again, when you're done, you can just log out. It'll quit out for you. Simple as that. And we're all good to go. All right. Thanks again for listening.